Welcome everybody to a new series on Enshrouded. I'm an old guy gaming and uh, very much looking forward to uh, trying this game out. Uh, so just a couple quick things. I uh, uh, was on a business trip all last week and uh, the game released uh, during that trip and I wasn't able to play at all. So I'm get a little bit late getting started compared to, you know, most other YouTubers. So it is what it is, but can't do anything about it. Um, uh, while I was away and had some free time, um, I did actually watch a few uh, YouTubers play it. And then when I got home yesterday, which was Monday on January 29th, uh, I actually started playing it and uh, recorded two episodes. And then when I rendered those episodes out um, overnight, which is what I typically do, and then, you know, came into my office in the morning, I discovered, unfortunately, that <laughs> my, my SSD drive that I was using uh, completely failed um, and, and won't come back online. So it's it's corrupted. Uh, so I basically, long story short, I lost all of that. So I gotta, I'm gotta, i going to have to start all over again because I even lost the you know original recorded footage too. Uh, so what that means is that I am familiar uh, with the early parts of the game based upon what I've seen and what I've done myself. Uh, I got as far as um, rescuing the blacksmith and was just about ready actually to go uh, take on the first boss in the first um, uh, elixir pit or whatever those pits are, you know, where you go do the bosses. Uh, so anyway, that's where we are with that. So as far as settings goes, um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to set this to well, it looks like it's already on a quality preset. So let's just leave it on those presets for now, and we'll see how things go. Uh, quick side note for those of you who uh, watch my videos all the time, and uh, I have finally um, decided to purchase a a better video card. I did not get a 4080 they're just too damned expensive but i did get uh the new 4070 ti super um which is uh, supposed to be a pretty damn good card for about 400 dollars less and so I'll, that'll be showing up in a couple of days and then you know hopefully that will definitely improve things particularly on asa you know which as most of you know i've been playing a lot of uh, so anyway that's that all right so let's jump in and get started here uh, we're going to start a new character uh, it doesn't really matter to me, you know, what the presets are a whole lot. There, there's just a couple things we will do, though. Um, let's change the hair to... Uh, how about... What does this look like? Um, well, actually, here, let's go to the beard first. This is the most, the fullest beard that is offered to us. Um, and we want it to be... We'll make it a gray beard. Okay, so now let's go back to the the hairstyle and um, just kind of figure out what's going to look best with that beard. I kind of like actually the long hair a little bit. Not really that. That's like he's got a, his hair in a bun there. No, not really digging those things. What does this look like? Also in a bun. Mm, what does this look like? It's not terrible. That's a little too clean cut, I think. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Why not? Uh, okay, and then uh, we want it to be. We'll make the hair color white and the gr and the beard gray. Okay, it doesn't look like. I don't think it gives you an option to change like eyes color and that kind of thing, as far as I know. Um, What if we, what if we went with this, uh, but change the hair to white and back to that beard with gray? Yeah, that works. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, we'll pick, we'll, let's see. We'll go with that voice. Um, and of course we will name our character OG. There we go. Create the character. Okay, there we are. Um, all right, now what we want to do is click play, start a new game, create the new game. We'll call it um, OG. We'll just call it OG. Why not, right? And let's do this. Long ago, a wanderer brought an enthralling gift to the people of Embervale. The elixir. It was a cure. A blessing. A weapon. Once concealed by the ancients, 
its might had been set free. With it came power, mistrust, and a longing for more. Humanity dug the elixir wells, ripping apart the land and each other to quench their thirst. Elixir and blood, a drop for a drop. But from the depths of the wells, an unforeseen curse crept into Ember Vale. The shroud, a ruinous fog which sought only to spread and devour. Facing their downfall, ancients and humans united to forge the Flameborn. Now, your time has come. Awake. Okay, and we now have control of the game. Um, yeah, so that uh, opening story is kind of cool. Uh, there's some holes in it, like for example, how did we get? How did we get from the elixir to all of a sudden the elixir wells? <laughs> I don't know. We won't read too much into it, but the basic basis of this story, from what I've learned so far, is that you know we 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 got these uh, we dug these elixir wells, but um, we dug a little too deep, and the Balrog came out in the form of um, you know the shroud, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> And so we are this dude called the Flameborn. And when we get close enough to something that can burn, a little flame pops out of us and lights it up. And we are supposed to save the world somehow, but I'd have no idea how that's going to play out. And so, yeah, we will discover that together. Okay, let's go ahead and commune with the flame. You've slumbered for too long, Flameborn. The realm of Embervale has fallen, consumed by the Shroud. Now the enduring flame calls for you. Find a place in the ruined world and construct a flame altar to create shelter from the dark. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So that's the first thing we got to do is get ourselves some shelter um, and set up the flame altar thingamadoodle. Uh, very beautiful world. Very large world too, by the way. And everything that's kind of visual to us right now um, is only just a small percentage of, of the size of this world. So it's, it's pretty large. Vast world awaits you filled with secrets and peril. Press tab and navigate to the map to track your discoveries. Uh, I have remapped a couple of keys too, by the way. Um, I have a, sometimes I, I have trouble clicking on these. It does, it's like, you gotta click on it. Oh, you know what, I think it is, you ha, uh, what? Yeah, 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 I already know what that's. You have to wait till it kind of lights up, I guess, for it to register. Oh, I know what the deal is. I'm I'm pointing at the, the hotkey instead of the actual world. Okay, because I was having some trouble with that earlier and I'm just trying to figure out what the hell is going on with that. Uh, okay, so. We have our, our first story. There's lots of these stories that we're going to come across. Because I do dig the lore, I will be reading them. But if you already know it or don't want to listen to it, simply just fast forward the video uh, to the end of the reading. Okay, and I might not read every single one either, but uh, I want to I want to include the story in this playthrough. Okay, on the flame and its murmurs. Um, so what I do know is that there's going to be different kind of story branches this one happens to be from somebody called the general or maybe it's just general information yeah that's probably what that means um no i'm sorry this is actually from the alchemist of balthazar which who we will actually be rescuing later anyway um pure light engulfs the knowledge of the ancient breed protects it in a flaming core wisdom far beyond my own imagination i could stare into the fire for hours seeking answers a whisper but i hear none despite possessing a voice it only speaks to those born from the flame a shame, as I believe we could have quite we, we could have quite enlightened conversations. Okay, so this was written from Balthazar. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, that, that just kind of talks about how we're the flame born and we can actually talk to the flame and it tells us things. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's head on down here. <coughs> Excuse me, I am actually um, on the tail end of COVID. I get, I did contract COVID when I while I was gone, and it sucks. And so I apologize in advance for coughing and sniffling and that sort of thing. Here we got our first chest and we will take um, some bandages. There's more bandages. That's good. Um, this game to me is kind of like a cross between, well, it's, it's kind of like if Valheim Fable 
and Zelda had a baby. <laughs> That's kind of how I think of it. And it's really fun, actually. I, I enjoyed the time that I played it and have enjoyed watching other people play it. And it's a, it's a little bit of a of a change of pace for me because I'm you know usually a pretty hardcore survival gamer like you know Ark Survival Evolved and Seven Days to Die and those kinds of games, uh, but I do occasionally like to play you know these more RPG uh, types of games. But the cool thing about this game is it also has vo a voxel world you know so we can we can go in and change the world in addition to to those RPG elements. So I really like that. That's really neat. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and head on into here. Is there? Okay, now here's another torch we can pick up. Let's do that. And we want to kind of watch for some of these areas because there, there can be secrets behind them. And um, this might be an example of that. Right, okay. So in this particular case, we have to throw fire bombs to break the terrain. And it just so happens that there's some fire bombs right there. How handy is that, eh? I think it takes two to get through there. And now we have another chest. And we get ourselves a hatchet, which we will take. That'll be a fairly decent weapon for us starting out here, but we will replace it uh, in time. Um, I'm going to put this over here. We'll put those in that spot for now. Okay, we got another thing to read. Uh, this is a song. I'm not going to sing it for you, especially since I have COVID. So um, <laughs> if you're interested, pause the screen uh, to read the song. So, you know, it's just kind of fun stuff. Okay. Um, now, one thing we can and should be doing is breaking uh, various things, particularly if it's something that um, could potentially give us scrap metal. Um, and now we also unlocked the shield too, because scrap metal is kind of hard to come by, uh, at least right at the start here. And uh, so, yeah, uh, we'll be we, we'll be going by breaking that stuff. Can I make that shield right now? Let's go to crafting. Um, I'm going to need some string, which, and I haven't discovered string yet. I probably won't until I pick some plant fiber. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and head on down here. There's another area to break here. We'll bring our torch out so we can see. And we got a chest with some more bandages and torches. All right, very good. I don't think there's anything over here in, in, the, in terms of secrets. Uh, for us to bust open. So let's head on down to our very first short little journey through a shrouded area. Uh, and we can't spend a long time in here. Let's see what this has to say. Um, oh, no, that's just a torch. I thought that was a note. Uh, the flame allows you to resist the shroud, but if you linger, you will perish. Escape the shroud to replenish your maximum time in the shroud. So yeah, we get, I think, by default, a maximum of five minutes in the shroud. And if you don't, if you let that expire, you die. I mean, it's all, oh, I thought there was something behind there. It, yeah, there's, it, it's not like you start losing health. You, you're you just dead. So you don't want to stay in the shroud any longer than you have to. Um, use backspace to lock onto your foes. Yeah, like I said, I changed some of the, um, some of the settings. These little things that kind of move, you don't want to break those or get too near them, especially the bigger ones, because they will reduce your time in the shroud, which by the way is shown up above. I am going to assume um, for that maybe some of you watching this are watching it for the very first time, so I will explain some of those basic things. Probably most of you that are watching this have either already started playing yourself or have watched somebody else, but you never know. Uh, okay, so we got a couple more bad guys here. Um, fortunately, we didn't get them both, not that I would have any trouble with either one of them. And so we're going to try and parry this guy. There we go. Um, the combat in the game, at least when you start, I know you can add more things, you know, through the skill tree. Uh, but it's pretty basic, but you do have the ability to parry, which of course stuns the enemy, and then backstab too. Um, it's, it's fairly simple. It's not, you know, on Dark Souls level, but it's still, uh, it's still a lot of fun. And besides, there's a lot more to this game than just combat. That's just one aspect of, you know, many cool things that it has about it. Okay, so I think that's all we can do in here i might i might have missed something but i don't think so so let's get out of the shroud here um and i just want to kind of quickly look at these i don't think there's anything you know behind there in terms of um like a secret or something like that excellent okay let's hop on out 
And this is this is basically a checkpoint, these little globes. So if I die, I can respawn right there. Cool. Uh, okay, we have just learned the construction hammer now. So again, uh, you start to learn recipes when you either, you know, find something new or enter a new area or, you know, accomplish an objective or whatever. Um, so if we go to here and collect these, we get plant fiber, and now we have unlocked string, which was, is what we need for the... Um, uh, the shield okay so let's pick some berries too the the that's some very good early game health generation um we have some beehives here the honeycombs are very good early game uh stamina uh regeneration and what i want to do here now is if you notice in the lower left hand corner if i press alt i have two different toolbars which is really cool um so what i want to do is something i'm not going to be using all of the time I'm going to put up here, plus we don't need all of these torches out either. Uh, but I do want to keep my healing stuff kind of on the left, and then my combat stuff, you know, more kind of on the right. And this is, that's sort of kind of like a neutral thing. Okay, let's go into here, and we'll go to crafting, and I want to make, um, let's just turn all of that into string. And then now I can make the shield. And then what we do with the shield is we go to our backpack, and we equip this and it puts it in our shield slot and the cool thing about that is it doesn't take up um it doesn't take up our an inventory slot or a toolbar slot um, so these extra areas here are, are actually extra areas uh, which of course gives us a lot more uh, room okay cool um, my plan also as far as a build goes is i think what i want to do is i want to um probably be mostly a ranged character i'm thinking you know like a hunter ranger you know type of guy but we'll definitely be using melee too uh, you can pick mushrooms but th what that's for more is for casting because it inc increases your intellect attribute we're going to be more interested of course in uh, fortitude for health and endurance i think it's called for in fact if we just go here and go to attributes yeah so endurance is Stamina, spirit is like for mana, and constitution is health. So we'll be, you know, looking for ways to boost um, yeah, the health and the in the stamina. This little red thing over here is where they want us to set down our flame altar, and of course we're going to need some stone to do that. So let's just pick up some stone, and you know, grab a more resource, uh, grab a few more resources. There's a bit of grinding in this game. It doesn't, at least so far from what I've seen and done, it doesn't seem to be too bad, but you know at some point you have to kind of stop and just grind up a bunch of resources to do what you need to do let's run on over here okay so we have reached the area called the plains this is where they want us to put uh, the flame altar down and we can also we can always move the flame altar later if we need to uh, so we have enough stone to make this let's go ahead and craft it we'll go into our backpack and it's already on our toolbar and i think what i'll do is i'm going to put it probably and let's put it right about here that's good enough okay commune with the flame you are not alone there are other survivors drowsing in nearby ancient vaults find them so they may aid in your journey go gently one beckons nearby just outside of the shroud's grasp okay i just happen to know that that is the blacksmith and once we obtain him uh, he will allow us to craft better stuff um, so before we go after him though, um, I want to, I want to do a couple of things. Let's go over here to the fort and, um, uh, we're just going to do a couple things over there real quick because there's some stuff that we can get. Um, one of the, the, okay, these things here will give us cloth and sometimes string, these little bags and stuff. Uh, so that gave us some cloth. And we might, if we break this, we might get um, some metal, scrap metal. So let's just, okay, good. We got string and cloth right there. That's that's awesome. Hey, we got a level up too. Very cool. All right, let's look at that real quick. So if we go to, to the skills menu, um, the skills tree is really you know, pretty cool. It's got your typical stuff. So kind of on the left is melee. Top is ranger, which we're mostly going to be going for, um, you know, ranged. And then the right-hand side is uh, magic stuff. Uh, so what we're going to do is we want to get to this double jump because that's what everybody's saying. You pretty much just have to have no matter what you're going to do. 
Um, so we have to start with endurance, uh, which will increase our endurance. In other words, our stamina uh, by 10 per attribute point. So we'll unlock that. Uh, the next thing we'll get is runner. But um, because this is the way this works is the small squares is one point. The medium sized squares require two points and the big ones require four points. So we'll have to wait till we get the next point before we get to this. And then that will, of course, allow us to obtain this once we get the points. Excellent. Let's go into the crafting menu here for a second. And what we want to do is make ourselves um, this ragged shirt. It'll give us 17 physical and magical armor, which doesn't suck. It's better than nothing at all. Uh, we'll go here. We'll equip this. And that puts that in our uh, armor slot here. Uh, we don't get any armor for those at all, but later on we can... <coughs> Excuse me. Later on we can um, craft some, some more rag armor too. Uh, but we'll start with this. Okay, so let's go through here. When we get into this little spot here, we've got some uh, food that we can pick up. We also have another note, and basically that note tells us that we can we can cook. Uh, so yeah, this is just a general sleep and eat and rest. Finally, a break from the tedious work. My bones are sore, but the warmth of a fire, a little shelter, and some sleep should allow me to become well rested. Food is getting scarce. I hear they're planning an expedition. Thankfully, I hid some rations below my bed. They will make for a nice meal when cooked over fire. Okay, so um, this game has, uh, you know, similar to Valheim in particular, um, when you get like rested bonuses, and you can see that in the upper left-hand corner, so shelter, warmth, and comfortable, that then increases for a temporary period of time your attribute, and depending upon, you know, the degree to which you uh, have those things. Now, for cooking, what we want to do is grab... No, that's not what I wanted to do. Gosh, dang it. I just made myself sick, which reduces my attributes for a time. We want to get up to the fire and click cook. And then we choose what we have for cooking. And again, like Valheim, we hold it over the fire till it sizzles. And then there we go. Um, and if you do it for too long, of course, it will... Um, it'll burn. Uh, which will give you another resource. I think it's like charcoal or something like that. Okay, let's go to our, our uh, yeah, here. And we'll put the food. See, so what does this food give us? This gives us constitution. So this will give us for 20 minutes, uh, um, it'll increase uh, the cap on our health. So this is actually a buff food, whereas this will give us stamina recharge and health regeneration. So these are more active uh, you know, replenish, whereas this increases cap. So we'll have different foods that will do that for us. Um, oh, looks like I, f I must, I found a, um, a health potion. Uh, so let's, let's put that over here. Excellent. Okay, so that takes care of that. I want to, um, we'll, we might actually use this bed to sleep. When you sleep, the nighttime goes by really quickly. Um... But let's uh, let's just check a couple things out here really quick, resource-wise. Um, we might actually get some metal scraps from these big barrels. Maybe. We got some string and some wood, some water, and there's actually a, a well um, nearby that we can go to and get a bunch of water. Now, what the water does is it... Uh, give it it gives us a cap on our endurance and also uh, faster stamina recharge as well and it, again it's a direct use item so let's actually move that over to this fourth slot there there we go there's our first metal scraps we're gonna need a lot of that stuff a little more bandages there now one of the first things we're gonna want to do is build the workbench because among you know besides opening up crafting it also will repair our uh, our equipment. So can we make the workbench? Yes, we can. Okay, let's just craft it right now. Um, but, but we're going to set it down over by our uh, our flame altar. Now, I want to go over back over here to the well. There's more, th you know, more stuff we can loot around here. But if we go to the well, uh, then it'll just give us like five waters per scoop. And I, I, we can have like a big stack of these. And again, this is useful for, for stamina region in particular. Okay. Um, I, I think, I don't know how many times you can do that. It, it will eventually wear out, but let's grab like 20 of these. Okay, cool. Break this stuff, see if we can get any uh, metal scraps in particular. Um, oh, well, I guess I'm getting more water. <laughs> Didn't mean to. 
cool. Uh, okay, it's starting to get dark, so I think what we'll do is let's go back to our flame altar. Um, you know, the other thing we could do is we could set the flame altar up over here. We don't have to keep it over in the plains and that way we have immediate access to this fire and this bed not that it's hard to make those things um got just a little bit of an enshrouded corner there um can i make another flame altar i can okay what i think we're gonna do then is Let's do this. Not enough free space, it says. Can I put that? It, it actually goes into that little enshrouded spot. That's interesting. Um, now it's now it's super dark. I can't see a damn thing. Um, but it would be nice to be, you know, kind of right by the well. So yeah, let's just put it here for now. Um, we are going to need some shelter, though, too, because uh, the blacksmith needs shelter to make certain things. Not everything, but certain things. Um, so let's just put this right here. And we'll press R to rotate it so that the, uh, the little uh, vice thingy there is out. And then as soon as you open this, it automatically repairs your stuff. And it doesn't even require resources either. So that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're just going to sleep and the nighttime will go by really fast. Uh, monsters do come out at night um, too, but I'm not really too worried about that. It's more just because we can't see very well. Okay, it is now dawn. Beautiful. We have our stuff repaired. Let, let's take a quick look at this. Um, we can make a construction hammer, which we're going to need, so let's just make that now. And we're going to want to go after the glider and the hook as soon as possible. In fact, we can make the glider. We have enough metal to make the glider right now, but we're going to need some shroud spores, which we'll get when we go down into the shroud. We need shroud wood to get the glider, so we'll pick some of that up too. And we need to take out a few critters. Uh, but for storage, I want to make some storage. So let's um, go into here. And I'm just going to turn all the plant fiber I have into uh, to string. And then let's make one of those. And we'll just put them down. This is all very temporary, by the way. Um, we will build a nice base because one of the coolest cool things about this game is it's building. Um, but for now, we're just going to do what we need to do to do the basic stuff. Okay, so let's move things we don't need to be carrying around with us right now into here. Um, which is pretty much everything. Oh, you know what, though? I do want to make a bow, so and then we'll have to make some arrows. We don't need all these extra torches. Let's keep that in there. Um, we'll, eat, we'll eat the chicken right before we go down into the, to the shroud. And we don't need to carry around the uh, the building hammer until we're ready to actually start building, which I'm not going to do quite yet. Why is there? Oh, okay. Um. All right. So bow. I wanted to make a bow. What happened to my? Oh, never mind. Okay. So to make a bow, I think do we do that in here or in our own inventory? I think we do it in our own inventory. So let's go to crafting and a bow. The other thing that's cool is, is you can pin stuff, um, which is cool. So we just need uh, some twigs for that. Uh, let's go over here. That's plant fiber. Sometimes I, I hold the button down and you don't. You just tap it to, to pick stuff. Do we get twigs if we cut a tree? This isn't really the, this isn't a tree cutting axe, this is a combat axe, so it's not really ideal for cutting trees. We can make a basic one, uh, you know, basic axe and a basic picks out of stone, which you should, we should probably actually do. Um, 
let's see, bandage string. Here we go. Axe. So we need more stone for the axe. And let's do that real quick. We're going to take out a few critters here pretty soon too, just because we need their hide or their fur. Uh, I just need to find some stone. Let's grab more of these for the honeycomb in particular. Here's some stone. It gives us three stones, so we should now be able to make the axe. And then for the pickaxe, we need more twigs. Um, is it the bow that I pinned? Yeah. Uh, we need, yeah, we need twigs for that too. We, we don't need to keep that pinned though. Okay, so let's just go get some twigs. We have a wolf here. And sometimes the wolves will give you hide. Um, when we get bones for the first time, we then learn to make an ice wand, which is somewhat useful simply because it's a ranged weapon and it doesn't use, doesn't require anything in the way of, um, um, actually, you know what? I don't want that there. Let's put it, uh, let's put the water down here. I want to keep the, the, you know, tools and building stuff and accessory stuff will be on the second bar. Combat stuff, stuff we need more immediate access to will be on the first bar, by the way. Um, what was I doing? Lost track of time for a second. Oh yeah, we were talking about the wand. So the wand is kind of neat because, um, you know, it gives us a, 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 it's pretty weak, but it does give us a ranged weapon and it doesn't cost anything. You don't need any fuel. Like this, when you get the staves, you need like a, a magic bolt spell or a fire bolt spell to, to actually use it. Uh, so the wand doesn't suck in the early game. And of course you can find better ones too as time goes on. Okay, so we need to get some more twigs. Okay, we got some there. Um, we're going to need a few more because we're going to need it both for the... Um, might as well take him out right now. For the bow and for the um, the pick that we need to make. Here, we'll get twigs from this. Maybe from this. Okay, so let's make the pickaxe. And we still need five more twigs to make the bow. And we want the pickaxe to go down here. Cool. Now, if we go and use just the normal axe to cut a tree down, does this give us twigs? I don't think it does, but let's just try it. We need the wood anyway. Um, yes, it does. Okay, good, good. It does give us twigs. That gave us four. I think we need five. Whoop. Okay, now we should be able to make the bow. Excellente. We'll put the bow in, in slot number two. Um, now, as far as arrows go, we can craft arrows out of twigs as well. But... If we go over to back up to the yard here, uh, we can actually pluck some arrows from the targets. Uh, yeah, right over here. So that's kind of cool because then you can, you know, you can loot arrows from the world. And these are scrap and flint arrows, which are actually a little bit better than the wood arrows that we can make it at present. Doing good, man. Okay, so we're kind of getting close to, to time here, but I want to do I want to do a couple more things before we wrap things up for today. Let's take a berry to get our health topped off. And let's go up to the upper part of the fort. There's a couple things we can loot here, and then we got a couple of um cellars we can go down into in the in the two little um, void areas or shroud areas I'm sorry not void areas and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a little bit of time off camera just kind of really going through this place and breaking stuff and trying to get as many resources as I can but uh, you know again that's an off camera thing if we break this yeah okay sometimes I think you can get metal scraps from those things as well. There's some water. 
in the tent here we've got some string and some more water and cloth nope i don't want to sleep yet i think that gives us tar which we'll use later on for things and here we have another note let's see what it has to say captain's journal okay so this is the ancients and the flame section captain's journal day one hold the chamber to your last breath these were the words of the ancient one before he entered with a handful of our best warriors it was the first time i'd seen one of his kind and i expect it will be the last his face is burned in my mind my life and those of my remaining soldiers are pledged to this sacred duty so this uh, captain arc right here basically he and his guys it was their job to to guard the ember chamber or or whatever that what's that thing called again um this thing center vault uh and keep me and anybody else that I, apparently that was in there safe um apparently i'm the only one that actually survived though in that particular center vault okay up here uh, i don't think there's anything here uh, we can break this for potential metal scraps uh, no, we just got bones and wood logs from that. Uh, stuff over here. So we got some twigs. Okay, let's just crash all of this stuff. So yeah, this stuff is definitely worth breaking. Uh, you know, because of what you get out of it. And, oh, yeah, there's a secret here. Secret door. Oh, it says there's threats nearby. Let me get out of here. Nice. We get some arrows and another potion. That's beauty, eh? Now we have two potions and a, and some arrows. Uh, okay. Let's break this. Any metal scraps? Yeah. Uh, again, um, I know I said I'd do this off camera, and I will, but I'm just, I kind of like to break stuff. Okay, let's go down here. I'll come back and grab that. Oh, shit. That was, okay, that's what it was. It was, um... These guys were the nearby enemies. So we can get some rat meat and some other stuff off of that. Um, let's break these for potential metal scraps. No, nothing. Okay. Um, I'll come back and get all the rest of the stuff. What I want to do is I want to go down into the cellars because there's some loot down there. And then we'll wrap up this episode. Oh, hey, there's a bad guy. Uh, falling to ruin. We held out hope. Digging through the rubble, our lips... Oh, shit. Oh, uh, uh. It's not usually a good idea to read when you're being attacked. Just note to self. Good. We got some more amber shroud thingamadools. We need those. Oh, runes we use to upgrade weapons. By the way. Okay. So, anyway, we were... Here, let's replenish our health. Um... Yeah. Usually when you break something, yeah, you can still read whatever was there. Okay, we held out hope digging through the rubble, our lips whispering prayers to the ancients, always a watchful eye towards the horizon. Even in this furthest corner of the world, the shroud threatens to engulf us and seal away any ray of hope. As the air grew thick with that cursed fog, we held on. As fires raged on the horizon, ash falling like snow on a howling pike, we pushed harder. May this home long kept usher us into a bright age. Okay, so basically talking about long keep here where we are and a little bit of history about it i i think uh all right i don't think there's much up here somewhere around here though there is some i think it's a little further up that way there's some flint stone before we go down into the cellar let's just get back out of the shroud for a second to replenish our shroud time timer and uh we'll have a couple enemies down here and then another chest and Maybe a couple more things to read. Oh, maybe... I don't know. Let's read this. The shroud looms. The blue jays no longer drift so carelessly through the air. Something's changing. A nebula flows towards us, springs from the abyss like a tidal wave. They call it the shroud. It carries disease and suffering, changes soil and people. I must understand this madness, but discovering a remedy will be difficult with supply lines cut off by the soldiers. Okay, that's from Balthazar. Um... While we're down here, let's break these two things. And then in here, 
Uh, I just happened to know from the last time I was in here that there is a chest behind that thing, but you got to pop it. And then you see this little miasma thing. You got to wait for that to dissipate because if you get in it, then it gives you a debuff. Oh, that's right. We need a lock pick for that thing. Um, okay. So we'll have to come back in here later. Um, there are more, there's higher priorities that I want to spend my um, metal scraps on that we get than lock picks. So we'll, we'll do lock picks later. And there isn't anything behind that bookshelf, um, I know. And you can dismantle these books and get old books, but I'm not, I'm not sure what those are for, but I'll worry about that later. Okay, I think that's all we can do down here in this cellar. There's one more um, shroud cellar that we can do something in. Is there something in this room? Uh, I don't... Uh, if there is, it's not obvious. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go over to the other side here. Uh, before we do, though, I'm just going to pop in here and repair everything. And let's also drop a couple things off in here. If you press Shift R, anything that's in here that's in here will automatically be transferred over, which is super handy. Um, we don't need to carry that. We want to keep the arrows. I'm going to turn all of that stuff into string. We don't need the runes or the books for now. I'm going to probably hang on to all this rest of the stuff because we still need it for crafting. I'm going to put the raw meat in there now too. Well, actually, we should we should cook that so that way we can just combine it with the slot that we currently have. So let's go to here. Oh, that's that is the thing. One thing though, you have to put it on your toolbar. Did I actually put it in there? I did. Silly me. It has to be on your toolbar to cook it, not in your bag. All right. There we go. Excellent. And we might as well actually eat one of these right now. Maximum health increased. So you can see in the upper left hand corner now I've got extra cap added to my health, which doesn't suck. Okay, let's go over to this other uh, enshrouded area. There's another shell, uh, cellar we can go down in here and then we'll wrap up uh, today's episode. I think we made pretty good progress, though. Of course, I'm a little further along now because I've already gone through this once. Um, so I kind of know what to expect. The other thing you can do, too, is you can get behind these guys and do some backstab damage to them. But they're so easy to kill that you don't really need to. All right, let's go down here. Too close to the puffy thing there. Um, okay, there's there's a guy behind there. So effective and resisted. Let let's let's take that out. We'll get behind him and backstab him. Backstabbing with a a. Uh, a knife, or not a knife, an axe. You know, knife, axe, it's all the same, not really. Okay, let's get rid of this. I don't know if there's anything behind there, but I don't want to step in to its gobbledygook anyways. Okay, we got a shield out of this, but actually that shield's not as good as the, the wooden shield. It's a metal shield, which kind of doesn't make sense, but it's the way it is. Okay, then we get... Got everything looted from there. Is that? Looks like there's scratch marks on that, on the wall there or something. I don't know. It's really weird looking. I don't know what that, if that means anything. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, I knew there was another spot down here. I just can't remember. Let's get rid of these guys. Wait for the miasma stuff to go go away. Okay, and then, uh, damn, it's dark in here. Okay, 
Okay, we got some string and a chest. That's the... Oh, three bandages. That doesn't suck. We'll take that. Uh, there's nothing behind these little growth thingamadoodles. Um, but it is worth our while to, again, break stuff and loot whatever we can get. Uh, it's just kind of hard to do in the dark because I can't see a damn thing. Um, you can use this too, but it just takes a long time, uh, relatively speaking. We'll pick up whatever we got out of that, which was some string and wood. And let's hit this real quick. And likewise, we'll do the same thing here. We can get more of these books here. I guess if I destroy this shelf, does that also destroy the books? We'll do a little test for science. Yes, it does. Okay, so if you want to loot the books, you got, you got to get them first. And I think that's all that's down here. There's more, a few more things we could break, but we need to get out of here because uh, our shroud timer's wearing off. All right, cool. So here's here's what's going to happen, guys. Um, I'm going to spend the rest of this in-game day um, hunting. So there's a wolf there, and um, there we go. Um, gathering resources and getting, you know, just kind of getting situated. I might, I'm, I'm, I might, well, I'll probably set up our first building thing on camera. Um, so we'll do that maybe in the next episode. And then we're going to go after the blacksmith. And once we go after him, you know, then we'll have a lot more, um, options, you know, for crafting. So, uh, that will be the plan in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button. Oh shit. And subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share out the video. Got to parry on him. It's kind of hard to the parry the wolves because their their actual attack is not super easy to determine. But uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, I'll just kind of get ready for for going after the blacksmith, and that will kind of be at, um, well the first the the two things we'll do in the next episode. The plan will be to build a little shelter and then go get the blacksmith. Um, and I will just do some farming and prepping in the meantime. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.